Hi, we're going to continue working with Google Sheets. Um, to start off with, what we're going to do is to go up to the Google Apps button, those three by three rows of little squares, and we're going to look for the for the uh, icon for Sheets. In my case, it's right over here because I've used it several times. Um, yours should be up there, but if it isn't, if you go down to the More, you can find it there. In either case, I'm bringing it up. And rather than starting the blank spreadsheet, I already started on the spreadsheet over here that we're working with because watching me type in numbers is about as exciting as watching paint dry. And right now, I'm waiting for this to come up, and here we have it. Now, right away, one of the you'll see the numbers all here. I'm going to start by putting in the headings. This is a quarterly sales report for Siegfried Supermarket We Shouter Specials. Those of you who've had me for a class live know that I can be rather loud. And I'm going to put in here January 2018. I'm going to come up here and put in February 2018. Now I'm going to want to stretch this across um, and uh, not just these two rows but to a third one. Um, what we're going to do is fill in a series. A series, unlike copying over a formula or a constant value, assumes that there's some regular interval that you're going to have. And doing this for date would be a very good example of that. Having spread it across as I did, and let me do that again, I'm hitting the shift key and the right arrow to bring it across. Now, grabbing that lower bar, I'll pull it across, and there you'll see, as if by magic, I have March. Now, this is all good, but this is not the format that I wanted in. The format that I wanted in is going to look a little different. So we're going to go to Format Number, and we're going to go down here for more date and time formats. Now, I want the year, but I don't want all four digits. I only want the first two, the last two, rather. And I don't want it to read month like that, but to give me the abbreviation. Now, the one thing that I want that I don't have here is a dash in between them. And I'll apply it. And now you see the format that we want. I'm going to put all of these except for the first row, and I'm going to go to Format, Number, Financial. Now, I don't want the dollars and cents, so I'm going to decrease decimal places once, twice. I'm going to come up one row, and this one I want to do with the dollar sign. I don't want the dollar sign in every entry. I don't need it, but at the beginning, it's good enough. And again, I'll go to the zero point zero with the arrow to the left, decrease decimal places, and there you'll see me do that. Now, over here, I'm going to want to put in a total, and actually totals in two cases, both down and across. So, total here, and I'll hit the sigma, that's for sum. And it's going to allow me to put in a range. So I'll go all the way here from produce down to health and beauty. And I'll hit the enter key. I'll come here as well. The sigma again. Sum. And health and from January, February, and March. And now I have that. Now I'm going to come back up here. And I'm going to drag this down. I'm going to come over here and drag it across. And the only thing really missing right now is over here putting in the total. Now, the problem with the total is, unlike the others, it's not right, adjust, right aligned. So I'm going to come over here to the Align button and make that right aligned. Now, I'm going to do a couple other things fairly quickly. On all three of these, I'm going to come up to the column bar, 
and I'm going to click here and I want to resize the column to 80 pixels which is 80% of what the size was before. I'm going to do this again and I'll do it again and I'll do it again Now, I'm going to want to have department not 11, but 12. I'm going to put the word the total and the total values across in bold. Now I'm going to come down to row 15, and I'm going to put in the word statistics. And below it average minimum and maximum now in each case I'm going to want to have here the average that I'm looking for so what I'm going to do is type equals and I'll type the word and you'll notice below I can see the values the, uh, which one of the functions I'm going to use, I'm going to hit the open parenthesis and I'm going to grab from all the way from A6 to A11, sorry, B6 to B11, and I can come down there. Here I'm going to want minimum, MI, and all I'm going to need is min, open parenthesis, and I'll drag down the same ones as before. And here, maximum, all I need is max, open parenthesis, and I'll, and I'll drag down again. Now, I'm going to highlight all three of these, so I can come to format, number, financial, and again, let's cut this down. And now I'm going to go across. Now, all of this is good, but I'm going to put it in italics. And I'm going to come back here and do it for the headings as well. But statistics, I'm going to also underline. And since I don't seem to see the underline button here, I'm going to go to format, and of course, here it is. Now, I'm not finished with everything yet, but the most important thing now is to construct a pie chart. So, I'm going to come down like this to cover E6 through E11, and now I'm going to go here to insert chart, and there I see it. Now, a few things along the way. This is not what I want. I want a pie chart, a three-dimensional pie chart, if possible. So I'm going to come over here to the, to the chart editor, to data, and I'm going to pick the chart type that you see down here. Now, at this point, there are a few other things along the way that I will want to do. So I'm going to go to Customize, and I'm going to go to chart and axis titles. Chart title will go in here. How we make our money. And two things, I'm going to change the font from Roboto to Arial. And I'm going to come down here, title format, over here to alignment, and I'm going to center it. So far, so good. Now the prop now along the way at this point I want to go back into the chart editor where I have the three dots I click. Edit chart. I'm going to go back to customize. And I'm going to go to legend and where it says position, 
I'm going to go to bottom. And that will automatically give me a dot for each one of the segments. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to data. I will click on the label and I'm going to put in the range A6 colon E6 I'm sorry, A6, I'm sorry, A11, and down here you can see all the headings. But there's one more thing that I'm looking uh, to do. Um, I'm going to come up here to pie chart, and what I'm interested in is on the slice... label over here under customize and slice I want percentage and now the chart is exactly the way that I want it but it's a little larger than I want it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink it down a bit just small enough just large enough that I still have um, all the labels in now, I still need, I'm going to move this down. This should be just a little further down, like so. Siegfried's Mark Supermarket will come across, like so. And we're going to merge and center. And we're going to increase this to 6 to uh, 14. Um, I will take these two, also merge and center. I'm going to change this to 12, and I'm going to italicize. And I'm going to... Let's not move it. Shift and the right arrow key all the way through here. Merge and center. Now the only thing missing here is a name. So on the lower right hand side I'll put in Dr. R. M. Siegfried. Obviously, when you put this in, what you're going to do is put your own name in there. And that basically, ladies and gentlemen, is what you need to do. The one remaining thing is to download it as a PDF and then upload the assignment onto Moodle. I hope this helps. And in either case, see you shortly.